Hi there, and welcome back for another quick tutorial. Today, the E-Team is having a fun blog hop, and our mission was to make a tag or an ATC. I decided I wanted to use the large Meyer Road bottle cap, so let's get started. Using the cropper dial, I punched a hole in the bottle cap. I used an old paintbrush and black studio paint to paint the front and back of the bottle cap. I wasn't worried about the ridges in the very center of the cap because it'll be covered with cardstock when this project's finished. What you can't see in this picture is along the sides of the bottle cap. I painted a thick layer of paint, not smooth. I wanted lots of texture. Don't forget to clean your brushes. This is acrylic paint. I added white paint to my brush. Sorry the picture's a little blurry, but I was taking the picture with my left hand and well, I'm right-handed. <laughs> But anyway, the amount of paint on my brush is like a ball at the end of the bristles. I should mention that you don't want a lot of water on your brush. The technique I'm going to be showing you today is called dry brushing, and you really do need a dry brush. So after I loaded the paint on my brush, on a paper towel, I rubbed in a circular motion and removed most of the paint. Seems silly, huh? But it's a wonderful technique. With most of the paint removed from my brush, I lightly started rubbing my brush on the inside sides of the bottle cap, adding a light white layer of paint. I repeated this step a couple of times until I achieved the amount of white I wanted. Some may ask why not just add a heavy coat of paint instead of multiple coats. Remember back a couple of pictures I said I added a heavy coat of black paint for texture. Well, by adding a small amount of paint at a time, you will see that wonderful texture start showing through. If you paint a heavy coat, you won't. It just covers it completely. I think you can see what I mean in the next picture. Well, maybe a little better, but as we go along, you will see what I mean. Now I'm going to start building my colors using the green and the purple. What I mean by building color is I'm going to add more colors over the white and I'm going to do it just like I added the white. First, add paint to your brush. Second, rub in a circular motion on a paper towel. And third, lightly add color over the white. Okay, now I have three pictures showing you what this looks like when finished. Gotta love that texture. After I cut and embossed my Spellbinder die template, I added lots of black paint. As you can see, along the ground, I went horizontal with my brush, creating lots of texture. On each one of the tombstones, I went from top to bottom. But on the bird, crosses, and trees, I, pat I patted the paint on. Just like before, I'm working on getting lots of texture. This will show up better in the next few photographs. Since I'm working on a small piece though, I did change to a smaller brush. Oh, are you cleaning your brushes as you go along? Just saying. Here's a better look at all that texture. Okay, I used the same colors on the dye template that I used on the battle cap and using the same dry brush technique. You will notice on my finished project, I didn't use that cardstock that's in the bottle cap. I almost did. But before it was all said and done, I thought it was just too dark and my little goodies I wanted to add just didn't show up. I added glue dots to a small piece of cardstock and attached it to the back side of the tree so the face would show up. Here's what I ended up using as my background in the bottle cap. As you can see, I sponged quite heavily on one side and left the rest alone. I added glitter to the outer circle, attached the circle to the bottom bottle cap with foam tape and then added some gauze. Copic markers were used to color the house and I didn't want it to look perfect. I mean, after all, it's a haunted house. I used Copic markers to color my twine from black and white. Tied my ribbon and twine through the hole that I punched on the top. I cut the little pumpkin dye template with shrink plastic colored it with Prismacolor pencils, and then used the heating tool to shrink it down. And last but not least, I added the moon and the bat. Just thought I'd throw this one in here. I think it's adorable, and my grandkids love it. It's made with a smaller Meyer Road bottle cap, 
all the circles are Spellbinder die templates, and the little teeth, they're scallop nest abilities. Too cute and fun to make. And it's a tag. Well, I'm going to leave you with some close-ups of my project today because I'm all done. But thanks for watching, and for a complete list of supplies with links, just visit my blog at Linda's Works of Heart. Thanks again, and be back soon.